this recording will explain to you the proof of the orbit stabilizer theorem. The statement of the theorem says that let g x on the set x, then for every element x, the size of the orbit of x is equal to the index of the stabilizer of x in g. That is, the number of elements in the orbit of x is equal to the number of distinct coset of the stabilizer of x. This is actually theorem 16.16 from John Fairline's text. I'm going to explain the idea of the proof to you, which is establish a one-to-one -one and onto map from the orbit of x to the set of coset of stabilizer of x. And this map I call it psi here. And this mapping is established as follows. Take y from the orbit of x. That means y must be equal to g cap x for some element g of the group g. Now the image of y under psi, psi of y is equal to the coset g stabilizer of x. I'm going to show you that first psi is well defined, then psi is 1 to 1, and third psi is 1 to. First, psi is well defined. Why I must clarify this? Psi is well defined. Take y from the orbit of x. So it is possible that y is equal to g1 cap x and it's also equal to g2 cap x, even though g1 not equal to g2. According to the definition of psi, psi of y could be equal to g1 stabilizer of x by using y equal to g1 cap x or psi of y is equal to g2 stabilizer of x by using y equal to g2 cap x. Now the question is, which one is the correct image? g1 stabilizer of x or g2 stabilizer of x? Well, no worries. I guarantee if g1 cap x equal to g2 cap x, even if g1 not equal to g2, then the coset g1 stabilizer of x and g2 stabilizer of x are equal. This is how I'm going to prove it. If g1 cap x equal to g2 cap x, now I act on both sides by G1 inverse. So G1 inverse cap, G1 cap x must equal to G1 inverse cap, G2 cap x now. Now, using the property of group action axiom 3, we know that the left hand side is G1 inverse times G1 bracket cap x and the right hand side is g1 inverse times g2 bracket cap x now g1 inverse times g1 is the identity element so identity e cap x must be equal to g1 inverse times g2 bracket cap x since from group action xm2 we know identity cap x is x. So I get x on the left hand side equal g1 inverse times g2 cap x. The last statement actually say that g1 inverse multiplied by g2 is in 
the stabilizer of x because it fix x now. So now, if I multiply on the left by g1, then I have g1 times g1 inverse times g2 is belong to the left coset g1 times stabilizer of x. But g1 and g1 inverse is e. So I have e times g2 belong to g1 stabilizer of x. And e times g2 is g2. So g2 belongs to g1 stabilizer of x. And we know the coset are either identical or destroyed. Since g2 belongs to g1 stabilizer of x, so g2 stabilizer of x must equal g1 stabilizer of x. What does it mean? It means that sign is well defined. If g1 cap x equal, equal to g2 cap x, then I show that g1 stabilizer of x is equal to g2 stabilizer of x. That means sign of y, if y equal g1 cap x or g2 cap x is equal to g y stabilizer of x is well defined. It doesn't matter whether you pick g1 or g2. Next, I'm going to show that sine is 1 to 1. What does it mean? It means I suppose I have sine of y1 equal to sine of y2 where y1 and y2 belong to the orbit of x. So that means that suppose y1 is g1 cap x and y2 is g2 cap x. That means if g1 stabilizer of x is equal to g2 stabilizer of x, then we must show that y1 must equal to y2. So how to show that? This is the proof. We are given that g1 stabilizer of x equal to g2 stabilizer of x but from star. Multiply both sides on the left by g1 inverse. So I get g1 inverse times g1 stabilizer of x equal to g1 inverse times g2 stabilizer of x. E times stabilizer of x equal to g1 inverse times g2 stabilizer of x. And so stabilizer of x is equal to g1 inverse g2 stabilizer of x now. Since the coset are destroyed or identical, that means that g1 inverse g2 must inside the stabilizer of x now. So if g1 inverse g2 belong to stabilizer of x, that means it will fix x. That means g1 inverse g2 cap x must equal to x now. If I apply group action by g1, so g1 cap g1 inverse g2 cap x must equal to g1 cap x. And then apply group action exam 3. The left hand side is g1 times g1 inverse times g2 bracket cap x and right hand side is g1 cap x. But g1 times g1 inverse times g2 is g2. So I get e times g2 cap x equal to g1 cap x first and then e times g2 is g2. So g2 cap x equal to g1 cap x. But g2 cap x is y2 and g1 cap x is y1 for our assumption. So that means y1 and y2 are equal. So this shows that if psi of y1 equal to psi of y2, then y1 is equal to y2. This means psi is 1 to 1. So the mapping from the orbit of x to the set of coset of stabilizer of x is 1 to 1. Now I'm going to show that it is also on to. How do I show that it is on to? 
I must pick a left crochet first. So let's say I have G stabilizer of X be a left crochet. Then let's say I pick Y be equal to this element G cap X. Then image of Y under side must be left crochet G stabilizer of X. Let's do the checking. Since y is equal to g cap x, which belongs to the orbital x, by the definition how we define psi, psi of y is equal to g stabilizer of x. So that shows that the mapping psi is on 2. So we have established a mapping psi which is 1 to 1 and on 2 from the orbital x to the set of left core set of the stabilizer of x. That means that I will show you the number of elements in the orbital x is equal to the number of distinct left core set of the stabilizer of x. Let's complete the proof.